you know who all of these people are, so I'm not going to introduce them at all. Uh, we also have a very interesting subject, which we are a bit uh, mystified by, but also quite delighted with, because it talks about writers, the method and the madness, and it talks about, I mean, the subtitle is Writers Tell All. Now, this, we realized, allows them to talk about most anything they want to talk about. Uh, Cyrus suggested this could go in a slightly risque conversational mode, but we are not sure we want to go there. Uh, so I'm just going to ask each of them to start, and not necessarily in any order, and please feel free to pitch in and talk to each other, but uh, please tell us something about the method and the madness of your writerly experience that you haven't actually talked about before, shared with any other festival audience, written about? Is there something that is so close to you that you haven't actually articulated yet? Or, well, not quite. Who wants How I feel as a novelist, you know, um, when I'm writing a novel, uh, you know this Bangalore auto driver, uh, he's, he's standing on the road, and you ask him, will you go to IAM? He'll say no. Will you go to MG Road? No. Okay, go anywhere you want left. <laughs> no. Okay, right also, anywhere, anywhere you want to go. He'll say no. My friend, I, I had a friend uh, who used to say, will you marry me? So he'll say no to that also. So the question is like, what do you do, boss? Why are you standing on the road? So some, when I begin, or when I'm writing a novel, it is such a process of exclusion that I feel like the auto driver. Like, you don't like this sentence, you don't want to use passive voice, you don't want to do this, you don't want to do that. Um, so I ask myself, uh, what do you want? Why, why do you want to write this novel? There is no clear answer to that. Uh, so uh, one of the most uh, unproductive jobs of feeling of being extremely unproductive is when you're writing a novel, or at least I feel like that. After eight hours, 10 hours of writing, you've done 300 words, 500 words, and the whole world is thinking that you're shut inside, you're doing something great. Uh, and also when you're writing a novel, for some reason you feel it's a grand thing. Uh, if someone asks you to change a light bulb, <laughs> as it might happen in your marriages, or, or it could be put the suitcase in the attic, whatever your thing is, I mean, how can you be disturbed? You're doing, you're writing a novel. You're, some, you're doing something great. And that paragraph could actually be something like, you want to describe when people with low, wa low, low waist jeans sit down and their ass peeps out. Is it a comma or a dash or one? <laughs> what is the exact metaphor? You know, that is what you're thinking for three, four hours, and I'm not exaggerating. So, so it, is, it feels pointless, but it is, it, it is exactly what you want to do at the same time, you know. So, uh, so that is part of the process I would like to, I would like to confess, mm -hmm. the, the feeling of uh, helplessness and, the f and, and, and feeling very grand, and at the same time, uh, feeling that you're not doing enough. Okay, let me go to Mira because I think she likes to shut herself up a little bit when she's writing as well and uh, does not like to be disturbed. Is this, uh, okay. Hello. Uh, my method in my madness is that I become mad, sad and very bad. First of all, I quarrel with everyone around. <laughs> For some reason, I'll fight with them. I'll accuse them for many things, and then I tell myself that I am a very lonely soul, nobody is with me, so my only, <laughs> only purpose in this life is to record whatever going around me, um, record all the hardship uh, uh, I am going through, uh, that I have to tell the world that I am an underestimated soul uh, who could do many things, uh, the world should not be like this, uh, the world should be reformed, and I am the hero, <laughs> the female hero, who should uh, show the world uh, how to repair itself. So this is uh, the primary uh, uh, homework or groundwork conditioning I do to myself. 
then what i'll do is that i'll wake up in the morning um then take bath and then i'll go out uh, i'll go out, uh, to temple uh, because i want to see very sad faces of other human beings <laughs> they will be praying they will be praying when you go to temple when you go to market you see energetic people no they will be bargaining they will be uh, choosing things and all but when you go to the temple uh, it is true that rarely you see very happy faces uh, maybe uh, to coming to offer thanks for the favors they received blessings they received but most of the people who come to temple have something in their mind they are uh, they are uh, carrying some burden some grief Uh, to be offered at the feet of the god or goddess i am i am a feminist no so i go for goddess always uh, <laughs> am, uh, so uh, watching them i feel uh, immediately consoled uh, then i'll i'll again reassure myself that i am here to record the woes of uh, the whole world and i have to go back immediately uh, in the temple i won't uh, spend much time i'll just go around see people and go back uh, i like to travel in an auto rickshaw uh, in the morning in the mornings especially because um, that will be the best way to see the world you know that tumbling uh, especially <laughs> the auto rickshaws of our uh, my homeland kerala and then i'll go back then i'll switch on my computer uh, Uh, after breakfast and all then i'll tell myself that i am going to uh, create this wonderful masterpiece um, which um, no other writer not even uh, any writer has ever imagined and i'll sit down but then i can't sit down i'll walk i'll i'll just pace up and down the rooms it will continue for uh, hours maybe 24 hours maybe 48 hours there are occasions uh, when i have been walking every morning after uh, doing all these rituals i'll come back i'll be walking up and down for three or four days till my uh, legs are swollen then maybe on the fourth day it is set right i think the stories the ideas walk to me i don't know <laughs> what it is so i am waiting for them that that's the that walking is my main uh, way of inspiring or inviting the muse right thank you meera <laughs> can i cut to cyrus now and ask cyrus to tell us about his practice of writing yeah hello uh, <clears throat> yeah right, writing for me is probably i could i would say that it's a way to deal with the chaos the crises and the conundrums which life bundles up and throws at you you know all the time it's it's not unique only to writers this, this thing happens to everyone i think you know in the in the in the, in the way of living uh, but uh, the writer is kind of uh, in a way sort of privileged uh, because he is able to or at least he thinks he is privileged and he feels self important enough to think that he is diffusing the situation for himself by writing and it, I, i tend to agree with uh, the gentleman who spoke earlier that it's like uh, you know i just really hold your mic up close okay sorry yeah 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 so i think uh, 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 you know that the idea that you ca- you can get very ir- irritable and self important about writing is also true you know and you feel that you are doing something very special but uh, it is special in a certain way but you are just privileged i think to to be able to do that and if it works for you like you know the, the, that's one one point but the thing about uh, writing is i think all good writing is to a great extent intuitive more than planned and it's not uh, you need some sort of planning some sort of uh scaffolding to hold together your your project your novel or your poem or what are you doing but uh if in the process of writing you don't uh, don't tap the intuitive side of yourself 
then I think it is uh, usually a less effective writing than if you if you are trying to plan everything. You know, I mean, if you so uh, basically, I just uh, I'm not a very good speaker. I'm not a very good writer. Also, I I'm, I'm, I write. Uh, people are, I get very uh, uh, touched when people come and tell me how much they like my book. Or, but it, it does happen only at festivals and things. So I, I don't know how much to trust that. I don't trust festivals very much myself. Uh, I'll take up from where Cyrus left off. Uh, he said writing is to some degree intuitive. And uh, that reminded me that the theme we have been given has been uh, uh, method in madness. And all of you know where it comes from. It comes from Lord Polonius talking about Hamlet. <laughs> but of course, there's a reverse side to it. There's also madness in method. And one can think of, say, Franz Kafka in the trial. <laughs> it's all about madness in method. Excess of method leads to a kind of madness, too. And I think as a writer, one needs to maintain a balance between these two positions. Uh, um, I know that there are writers who probably plan out their novels, and I'm very sure it works for them. But if I plan out my novel all the way, I think I would probably just get bored. Uh, and, and never write it. Uh, so, so in that sense, of course, you have an idea, and uh, um, uh, the American writer, Dr. Robin, said, uh, was, was asked once, uh, how, how do you finish a novel? And he said, it's a bit like driving in the dark. You can only see as far as your headlights allow you, but if you stick to the road and have a have an idea of the general direction, you do get to your destination sooner or later. <laughs> so, so, so I think that, that's an element about madness and method. In my case, because like everyone here, I mean, uh, I was kind of hoping that Vikram would be a full-time writer, but he tells me he has a day job too. <laughs> so, and all of us have day jobs. So, and, 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 and I have children. Uh, I'm quite a committed family man, uh, so I don't really have a routine. I tried that, but getting up at 7 in the morning or 6.30 in the morning and writing doesn't work because by the time you get, even if you get up at 5.30, by the time you get going, it's maybe 7.30. And then your children are up. And just when you get your first decent word down on paper, your child comes in and says, ah, what are you doing here, Papa? <laughs> and you get irritated. So, 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 so the only way is actually to start writing when you have time, and then there are periods when you cannot write. In the beginning, I used to worry about that, but then I realized it actually works better for me, because I write a few pages, I put it aside sometimes for three months, four months, I go back, I start reading from page one, and I write more. I have an idea of the general direction I want to head in, but that period of, 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 of waiting somehow allows ideas to mix in different ways so that I end up achieving what I think is the best combination of madness and method for me. That is what I usually do. <laughs> Vikram, you can take the conversation anywhere you like. Do you want to talk about madness, method, or anything else? <laughs> So we're not doing deep, dark secrets no, anymore? No, uh, we can <laughs> avoid it if you don't want to, but we are very happy to listen to the deep, dark secrets. I, I don't have any. I can't think of a single thing that I haven't talked about before in public. Uh, so what gets in the way of your writing? Oh, I, I guess like uh, Tavish said, like life, right? I also have two kids who are very young, 12 and 14, so you have to, you know, you have to take them to the, one of them to the gym, the other one for their social, you know, the party. And so like their mother and I are trying to work out the logistics and I'm trying to find the time. And I also teach. And then the, <clears throat> the, the I have this software company. And so like just, it's a blur. And there was a time that I used to be very disciplined. I would had set times for writing. I, I still try and do a 400 words a day. Uh, which I'm not able to do, but once all this started, your time becomes very fragmented. And then I never thought I would be able to work like this, but apparently I am out of necessity. Um, and I, I have to say that, I mean, you know, a lot of male writers in the past and the present who talk about like write at a regular time have women taking care of the rest of their lives. Right? So, so, I mean, we've been very privileged in, in that sense. Um, and I guess, like, the other thing that I find myself doing is I get obsessed with research. 
right? I, I really like to, when I, I, I write about things that I don't know about, right? So curiosity is the spur. So <clears throat> to give you a, like a specific example, when I started writing Sacred Games, I knew about Sartaj Singh because he showed up in a story in Love and Longing in Bombay, which was the book previous to that. And I had a vague sense of, so I knew that very early on that there was a gangster inside a weird bunker-like house talking to Sartaj over the intercom. And then I found his name, Ganesh Gaitonde, but I had no idea who he was or what his backstory was, right? And so then I start exploring, I start talking to cops and, you know, ba you know the bad guys on the other side and victims and whatever. And then, like, that's really seductive, right? I love being out in the field, talking to people, taking notes, taking photographs, and then simultaneously reading. And often I think that that's a way of me avoiding actually doing the terrible job of having to write, right? Which is really painful for me and I think for a lot of other people. So, but it all somehow miraculously, uh, again, as you pointed out, you keep writing. It's a marathon, not a sprint. You do 400 words a day. And amazingly enough, you actually end up with the first draft, right? And then you iteratively work on, on the next draft and the next draft. Of it. And then at some point, it's time to let it go. How, how do you know when to let go? Oh, so, <clears throat> you know, when I'm doing the second draft and the tenth draft, I feel like I'm moving, I'm doing major revisions, right? I'm deleting seven paragraphs. I'm moving this chapter from here to there. Um, and then at some point, I noticed that I'm now working at the level of paragraph rhythm and sentence. And then I'll do, like, literally, I'll be on the 49th draft. And then uh, there seems to be less even of that, that work, right? The little comma work. Yes. Um, and then it's like, uh, then it feels like it's time at least to send it to my agent. But then I'm sure all of you do this. When it comes out in page proofs, you always regret, right? And then when I'm doing a reading, there have been like certain sentences I think, oh, you should have done this so much better. It's so bad. So then I, in pencil, I change that and I read the new version that I would have done, you know, <coughs> before. Right. Manu, you write columns as well. Yeah. You have other things in life apart from writing novels. You also write for shows. You've been doing a lot of other stuff. Does that bring a very different uh, style into your thinking? I mean, do you have to compartmentalize these things or how do you navigate these different kinds of writing? Yeah. Um, I'll connect it to a, to a question you asked, Vikram, what comes in the way of writing a novel? In my case, it is uh, some kind of a clinical happiness, you know, which uh, impedes me as a writer. And I, actually, I should tell you that I, I don't hang out with uh, novelists or artists uh, or people with moral compass um, or, or people who major in sociology. Uh, I, I live in Gurgaon. As a result, I have great economic optimism about India for the next five years. And it, it gels with my optimistic personality. You know, I, 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 I ail uh, from a very banal kind of happiness. Uh, so, uh, so other kinds of writing, like journalism, just where I, I do columns, it's quite, it allow, it, where, where this kind of attitude can be a strength, you know, or like in a screenplay, which is far more playful. I'm a very good person when I write a screenplay. Uh, as opposed to when you're writing a novel, every, everything around you is crumbling and you're not exactly a good person. In fact, uh, when I used to write uh, my novels in my office, uh, and, and when I was the boss, I was the editor of Open Magazine, I would be so quiet that when this American colleague thought that I had a problem with him and he sacked himself. <laughs> Just seeing meaning in my silence because he comes from a society where everybody is gracious and they keep saying good morning when it is obviously morning. Uh, but we are Indians, we are, when, we, when we don't want to talk, we don't talk because we learn that from our fathers uh, <laughs> that you can behave badly and people respect you more. Uh, but uh, for some, I noticed that the last two, three years I've been writing screenplay and you can, you can interrupt me any time when I'm writing and ask me to change the light bulb or put the suitcase in the attic. I'm game or you want maths tuition or whatever. 
I can stop my work immediately, do that, have conversations, and get back to work. Same thing, uh, same thing with journalism, you know. Um, so so I, I, it's, it's a kind of a relief. Uh, these are very different kinds of, of writing. Uh, in journalism, you are not allowed to go inside the mind of characters you don't know. You know, I can write about Narendra Modi. Now, I think the organizers will get uh, nervous with all this talk about freedom of speech. I realize in literary festivals, if you feel that you don't want your session to be ever uh, broadcast, you just have to say Amit Shah. <laughs> They'll black it out, you know. But anyway, what I'm saying is uh, now, actually, that, that reminds me, uh, you know, that Narendra Modi came up with his, his poems. Uh, his, his poems were not uh, uh, widely appreciated, let's say, by people who usually appreciate poems. Because in his poems, he's a butterfly, or he's, he's a bee, uh, he's a lion. He emerges very well in his poems. Um, so, I, so I learn from these things, but th that, that approach works very well in, say, feature writing or a particular kind of a screenplay, you know, and a certain attitude I see does not always work very well in one particular kind of writing. It is not that poetry is bleak, but poetry derives its strength from a certain layers of human emotions uh, that you need to be open to, you know, you, you need to let yourself feel that. So different kinds of writing. I, I, I do secretly write poems, uh, uh, which I plan to release one day. Uh, though I don't know what I'm waiting for. Uh, even when I write poems, invariably my, my uh, need to be amusing comes in, you know, which is a form of corruption, in, uh, I feel, in writing. The, the need to be amusing all the time. And when you're not 18, when you're not 20, you need to get over that. Uh, uh, being amusing can be uh, a residue of, of something else. Um, so yeah, I hope that kind of in an ambiguous way answers your question. I don't know. I'm not sure why novel writing makes you a terrible person. I haven't understood that though. Oh, maybe you're a terrible person and you want to blame the novel, you know. It's kind of a, <laughs> well uh, said. Uh, we will buy that. It is, uh, I, I, I suppose it's a good sign because if, if an intense uh, activity does not let you be uh, what you want to be, then you're not intense enough, you know. I feel that artists are criticized for, uh, I don't know if the, I, mean, I, I think the only word I can think of is assholes. I don't know if it's allowed here, but... Uh, but I, I understand that, you know, I understand that because you want to do stuff and, uh, and uh, there are good things that come in your way, there are right things that you're supposed to do, but this is what you want to do and for, for eight hours a day and you need to find the time, people who are very good don't find the time for what they want to do. That is the fact of life, you know. So, uh, I, so I suppose... Uh, uh, some activities which are so intense that you can only do uh, 500 words a day and some, some actually novelists tell me that that's actually good a good rate and they come up with 100 words, 200 words. Mm. Hmm. Okay, let me, let me just give you another thing that we'd like to hear about, which is what does it do to you when s the word deadline comes up? That's only when I write things, no? I finish my work. Unless I have a deadline, I was talking about it yesterday also, that's why I didn't mention it today. Unless there is a, men, a deadline, I, I don't sit down. The, the ritual which I described uh, before uh, will happen only when there is a deadline. So the deadline is the only driving force for me to finish a work. I can start a work even without a deadline, but to finish it, I need a deadline. That is. That is something I, uh, I don't know, some journalists uh, have, must have cursed me to. But this is true, a not just of your journalism, but even when you're writing fiction. Yeah, yeah. You need yeah, to know. Because I became a full-time fiction writer after I served as a journalist for about a decade. No? So this idea of deadline and this habit of deadline and the character of deadline has been deeply 
affected me or infested me to such an extent that unless an editor orders me to contribute uh, something for uh, their uh, publication, it is very difficult for me to sit down and uh, finish it. But if there is a deadline, I can write uh, 1,000 pages, maybe in hours. <laughs> I don't know where that comes from, but somehow it happens. That's a miracle. Okay. And that's, that's the magic. I don't know how it happens. <clears throat> I find that very mysterious. I hate, hate, hate deadlines. I've, I mean, I hated deadlines when I was in school and college because, and then, you know, I've only published four books in a lifetime of writing. So that's maybe because you never worked as a journalist. Uh, that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I hate writing magazine stuff also. Um, and, you know, for my last book, um, Geek Sublime, I let my publisher, Chiki Sarkar, talk me into signing a contract for the book before I had a sense it was finished. I will never do it again. I will never, never do it again because it drove me crazy and I felt the deadline coming closer and I felt like I didn't have a structure for the book. It wasn't, and it was, it was really scary. And I luckily finally found it fairly shortly before the manuscript had to go to the printers. Um, so it's something I also think that I will never do it again, never do it once again, but I don't know whether I can uh, keep that promise because every time, that's the only way I write books, to be frank. Every publisher listening to this is obviously going to rush you a contract yeah, someone, I, very I, soon, I, Mira. I, this is, this is uh, uh, a very disguised form of uh, requesting them to force me to write <laughs> another book. And, uh, no, I think I, if I may. Well, like Mira, I, I used to be a journalist too. I worked for the Times of India. So obviously deadlines are something you get used to. You have to. And also as an academic deadline. So um, those don't really worry me in the sense that I can get my deadlines. Uh, and I hated deadlines in school too. But, but, I, but I, I learned the trick. Uh, but as a creative writer, I mean, I don't really have deadlines. I mean, no one pays me that kind of money. I mean, no one cares. Okay? If I finish the next novel, fine. I'll find a publisher. If I don't, no one is going to come looking for me like, what happened to this guy we paid a million dollars to? Because <laughs> I don't get a million dollars. <laughs> so in that sense, it, it doesn't really apply to me as a creative writer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but Tabish, you also went through the cycle where you said that you were writing, uh, getting a contract, publishing, etc. in a certain way, and then you just decided that you're going to do it your way. No agents, no publishers, till you have done the work you want to do, right? So that took a little bit to come to that point. Yeah. I mean, I can put it in different ways. Uh, I mean, um, for, for instance, I write very different novels every time, which also means that I sometimes need to move from one house to another, also because most editors and publishers move very quickly. I've only worked with, with I, there's only been two occasions when I've worked with the same editor for two books. Once with you, <laughs> when you were with HarperCollins, and once with Picardo in England when Sam Humphreys edited my first two my second and third novel. But otherwise, it's always been a different uh, editor. So, 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 so in that sense, I mean, but, but I, I, I'll come up with a less, uh, less uh, uh, an answer that, that is less, less self-congratulatory. And I would say, and this is what I say to MFA students when I'm forced to speak to them, and I need to be forced, given a fairly good fee before I speak to MFA students, because I really feel that I don't have anything to say, <laughs> anything to guide them. <laughs> so, and, and I say, well, I write different novels and I publish for different houses and it's quite simple for me because no one has ever given me the kind of money that would induce me to write the same novel twice. <laughs> so, 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 so that would be my kind of vague answer to your question. Okay, got it. Okay. Cyrus, do you want to contribute to this deadline conversation? Uh, yes. Uh, I, for many years I was... Uh, just a freelance journalist writer in Bombay, and I never thought I could write a novel. I always wanted to write a novel, and I had been preparing notes for it, for a novel, for, the, for at least 20 years in exercise books, you know, so, so there were quite a few collected by the end. So only in uh, 40, when I was about 41 years old, and I, had, I, I went through a sort of uh, illness uh, of the nervous system, which is called multiple sclerosis. And then I thought, that this is the time when I, I, sh I will either, I should write my book or I'll never write it again. I never, no chance of ever writing it. 
So that's what helped me actually to get down and I wrote my first novel. And it was uh, also for Picard or UK, by the way. Uh, I was very lucky with, with that break. And Sam Humphreys was one of the writers. Mike. Uh, Mike, Mike. Sorry. Yeah, so, so it was, uh, that, that novel was for Picard. But then, then I could finally, because I got that advance, a big advance. I, I had to. I had. I had to f make sure I delivered. You know, I couldn't just sort of just throw my hands up like you. You said, you know, uh, I couldn't say that. Okay, I've taken the money. It's good. But I, then I wrote that first novel, and after that, I've written another three novels and one book of short stories. And I'm quite happy. But I'm not a very disciplined writer. When I said earlier, I'm not a good writer. I meant I'm not a very pro productive writer. I, I. I should have written much more in in the time I, I spent writing because I started writing when I was when I was hardly 18, you know. I wrote some plays and, and then I always thought I could never write a novel, but finally, only at the age of 41, I wrote my first novel. So that's it, I mean, that's how deadlines work okay. for me. Yeah, <laughs> right. Um, so I can see can there's only eight minutes left. Oh. Shall we take some questions? Okay. I, yeah, is that, you wanna say yeah, something sure, before? Sure, no I wanted, I mean, uh, the, the, uh, maybe I'm eating into their time, so. No, 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 go on. Yeah. No, on the, uh, on the matter of deadlines, I have two, two things to say. One is uh, when uh, people think that uh, uh, the novel that you started when you're 25, you can finish it at 30 or 35, but it is not the same novel. The novel that you will write at 25 is a very distinct, unique novel. And, the, and, and, just, and if, you, if, you, if you take five years to complete it, it is not the same novel that has become better. It is a very different novel. Uh, so there is a loss uh, in, in taking too much time to write. I know it sounds terrible, okay, but the, I, I clearly remember the novel that I set out with a failed novel, even if it's a failed novel. The novel that I set out to write at 22 was a, was a very different person from the novel I eventually wrote when I was 34, you know. Uh, so that itself should should make us. There should be a bit of hurry in writing the novel because I know I'm repeating myself. You're not the same. You're not essentially the same person. Uh, and the second thing is, uh, well, people think that you need discipline uh, to write a novel or stick to deadlines. But I don't think there is anything called discipline. I think it is a very one of those lazy, broad terms that we have uh, we have started accepting, like multitasking, other nonsense. You know. Uh, I, I think most of them, we all should have our private procedures that we do, that people might think is very disciplined, but we do it because either we have an OCD, or, uh, or you have to tap into your OCDs, or the minor evils, or you should, be, you should ask yourself, why, why am I doing it? And if the answer is, some, is making you sound very noble, then that is wrong. So ask again, why are you doing it? And if the answer, portrays you as a slightly vain person or a per person who has a mind, who's slightly materialistic or you need something materialistic or ambitious, then you're probably on the right track. And we have to tap into our minor evils to finish our book as fast as possible. You know, uh, Discipline has got nothing to do with simply because it doesn't exist. It is a broad term given for uh, many private procedures. Um, I agree about the... I, I do think writing, the urge to write is a disease, right? It's something that stays with you and you do it because you have to. It's kind of like a compulsive thing with me at least. And a lot of writers I've talked to, but I don't agree with what the length and the discipline part, because I mean, the secret to actually finishing a book is just damn do it and show up at the desk as often as you can, stick to it, do your 400 words a day, do 2000 words a day, and keep doing it, right? Like that's, I mean, I've met lots of people who want to be novelists, but don't become novelists because they don't actually do it, right? Because life is very distracting. Life gets in the way. And <clears throat> I, you know, you have to be selfish. I mean, and artists of all sorts, not just novelists, are selfish as hell, right? And, and so you have to ignore some parts of your life. Your family will take some losses. Uh, you might end up in a divorce, right? <laughs> you know? <laughs> And, and like also, like one of my teachers, Don Bartholme, says that writers should never marry other writers, right? Because you're both then trying to do the same thing. And, and you know, it, I mean, 
somebody is going to take or both the loss comes in both directions and that's often a terrible strain right okay. <laughs> i agree with uh, victim and that with one point that all points i'm sorry but one particular point that writing people think that it is kind of uh, some uh, some talent or some god given uh, yeah uh, um, something uh, uh, that is whoever knows the language and uh, whoever can imagine things can write a novel is a common misconception actually what goes into writing something be it a novel or a poem or a, even a report i will say that uh, is very hard work manual labor physical labor you are sacrificing all your other uh, or should i say instincts mm. uh, to fulfill this only feeling of finding out yourself finding out something which is which is buried deep in your mind you are digging 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 uh, 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 till uh, the uh, uh, seed uh, sprouts and become a tree and it requires time you can you can make a tree in a minute or a, a day no uh, you have to wait you have to wait for a certain time till it uh, becomes a tree is that is my experience so somebody says it's a disease somebody says it's something you can't not do is there joy in this also may i just add to that uh, uh, as manu said um, uh, and i agree that uh, any any noble answer needs to be looked at with skepticism because self criticism is our first duty towards ourselves and especially as writers um, but uh, but i have never been able to answer why i write really and 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 i often tell younger writers that if you need to answer that question then maybe you shouldn't be writing i mean i just write because i write and i don't know why uh, so so in that sense uh, i i would slightly disagree with that position i would say there is no real reason to write for me there is there should be a reason for why you publish no that's different that's entirely different i mean about the joy and, and as far as uh, joy goes i think the joy happens so rarely but only when the writing is going well you know it's just a very very rare kind of sublime moment and uh, it's it's wonderful that's the only confirmation you get for that there's some validity or worth in what you're doing and that joy is something that you discover when you know things are going well or are you seeing out validation no, others it's, it's uh, i'm talking of internally sort of your own yeah your own feeling of happiness when you getting something right right um this what joy my friend and colleague robert house is a used to be the poet laureate of the united states had a great riff so there's a old old line uh, among writers writing is hell right so bob says said writing is hell but not writing is al also hell the only tolerable state is just having written <laughs> that, but i just want to say one last thing which is you know they told you about all the difficulties of writing and uh, that it's hell and it's mm, uh, many kinds of hell it sounds like to me but from our point of view as readers uh, i think you enrich our world so enormously that i hope you will all continue to live in hell forever thank you very much <laughs> <laughs>